I showed you this image and I asked you what parts of this rendering were generating using AI, what would you say? If you guessed the tree in the corner, the dog playing with the kids, the pond in the front, the forest all the way to the right, and the roof material, then you were right. Oh, and the window too. <laughs> all of these items were generated using Adobe Photoshop's new AI tool. As someone who spent a lot of time photoshopping in trees, people, plants, cars, shadows, you name it, into my images and renderings, I was super excited when I saw a preview of this generative fill tool from Photoshop. And I was so excited that I had to make a video of it, of course. And uh, so I just wanted to show you some, some examples of how I think this can be a useful tool, um, as well as how to get it and try it out today. So first, how do you get it? Real simple, if you're a Creative Cloud user for Adobe Photoshop, you simply open your Creative Cloud application uh, where you normally would see all apps. You slide down to the bottom here, you click beta apps, and right on the top here, you can install the uh, beta version of the generative fill tool. So now if you guys are familiar with the content aware fill tool in Photoshop, it does something like this. So normally it's pretty useful in the sense that if I wanted to, let's say, fill in this, uh, make this image bigger for some reason. So I just made the canvas a little bit bigger. I'm going to go in, I'm going to quickly select over here. I'm going to hit shift F5, which is a uh, shortcut for fill. And I'm going to do content aware and click OK. So you can see it does a pretty good job, but you'll notice there's some weird things, right? Look at the horizon line. Uh, look at the the trees. Like the trees look okay, but the horizon doesn't look too, you know, doesn't look all that great, and so on. Um, same thing with people, right? So if you wanted to, for some reason, remove this girl from the image, um, you might want to select it a little neater than this. But the same idea comes into play, right? I click Shift F5, Content Aware, and you can see it kind of does an okay job, but there's still artifacts. It's not the greatest. So until this generative fill tool came out, which uh, I guess it's not technically out, but <laughs> until it, until it uh, came out in beta right now, that was the only way to kind of remove things, right? And so the first thought is using this tool to, to actually um, remove or build onto your scenes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with this canvas over here. I'm going to select my area and down here on the left, well, before I do it actually, and so I don't have a hard line, um, there's this nice little uh, picker down here um, that you can expand your selection. So it takes it and expands it um, by a certain amount. So I'm going to expand it by three pixels, click OK. And then I'm going to say generative fill. And instead of typing a prompt, I'm just going to press enter. And now you could see what it did is it actually created a much better uh, recreation of my scene. You notice that the horizon is following better. Um, the other thing that you can see is I actually have some variations. So I can click through three variations and I can even run it again if I want. And so I'm going to choose this one because I kind of like it. But there's my variations of that fill. So if I wanted to remove objects as well, I'll quickly select the, these two children playing. And I'll jump back to layer one, make sure you're on layer one, I'm going to click generate to fill, I'm not going to click any prompt, I'm just going to press enter. Now you see what it did is it replaced it with the background essentially, um, but much, much cleaner, right? Those those kids never existed, right? If I turn this on and off, you could see how it did a great job replacing the context with what was there. So removing stuff from an image, removing stuff from a rendering, um, super useful tool there. The other thing that it can do is it can actually add stuff to the scene. And so if you've seen the promo video for this, um, you'll notice they added some stuff to your scene. Well, when it comes to rendering, how cool is that, that you can sort of add stuff after the fact without having to re-render some things. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to zoom in uh, to these children playing again. And what I noticed is that if you're adding something to the scene, um, you want to kind of make your selection be generally the size and shape of the object that you want. So right now I'm going to select right here and I'm going to put a little selection tool and I'm going to click generative fill and I'm going to type dog playing and press generate. So that was the only prompt, dog playing. And now you can see I have a dog playing and I can even skip, skip through a couple of them and choose the one that I like the most. And so I'm going to go with this little dog laying down. And you'll notice what it did, <clears throat> not only did it put the dog in there, but notice it's actually clipped around the grass and it's, it's built into the scene. Um, so one of the really cool things about this is it actually adds shadows and reflections based on the, the scene as the background. So another example of that is if I want to add a tree, let's say, in front of this building. So uh, maybe after the fact I realize, hmm, I want to have a, a, a tree right here for whatever reason. So I'm just going to draw a general shape of a tree. So for my prompt, I'm just going to type oak tree and press generate. Okay, and what you'll notice here, so if I go through my two options, three options, I should say, they're all not too bad. This first one, unfortunately, the uh, 
the trunk is a little, a little funky there. Um, so I'm going to go with this guy right here. I think this is kind of a cool looking tree. You'll notice it's kind of gets blended into it. Um, sometimes the AI will pick up reflections and try to blend them in. So you'll notice that it actually blended in the reflections a little there as well as shadow. So we place the tree in front. Um, it's also non-destructive, which is kind of cool. It places a layer with, with alpha. So let's, let's add a couple more things. Let's add, let's quickly add a stream or a river or something like that to the bottom here. So I'm going to select the bottom. I'm going to say generate to fill. I'm going to say rocky stream. Now you'll see we have a couple options here. If I flip through them, that's not too bad. Add a little rocks and water there. Pretty cool. So then I wanted to test, you know, additive, subtractive, adding some things, doing that. Um, then I said, let's let's see how it does with replacing materials. Okay, so I wanted to quickly test it out. I'll use the same image for now. Um, I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide the tree for now. I'm gonna jump back here and I'm going to select with my polygon selection tool. I'm gonna select across here. And I'm just gonna select the roof pretty roughly here. And for generative fill, I'm going to say um, dark wooden shingle roof. Click generate. All right, so you can see it replaced that. Uh, if I flip through these, you could see it's even attempting to get the perspective right. <clears throat> and so this is one where you'd probably go through quite a few prompts before you got what you wanted. But for now, I'm just going to leave this one, you know, which 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 looks okay. Okay, so that was kind of cool. So th there's different ways you could play with the, play with the prompts. Obviously, is where it comes down to it. But then I also wanted to see what if I wanted to add building elements. You know, why not? Let's just see what happens here. So I'm going to zoom into this little area of the building. I'm going to select from here to here, and I'm going to say generative fill. I have to make sure that I'm selected on my on my base layer. Say generative fill and we'll call this tall window system with uh, black frame and reflective glass. And maybe I'll do tall modern window system. So just like anything in AI, um, you know, the more that you use it, the more you start to get a feel for the prompts and how they want to be laid out. All right, so there's our first option. Not too bad. Oh, that one's not too bad. And that one's okay. So this, this second option is pretty good. You could always regenerate, but you'll notice what it even did is it even attempted to make a reflection. And from back here, it looks like it's part of the rendering. If I turn that on and off, I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool, I have to say. So there's some uses for rendering, right? That's pretty cool. I mean, being able to fill in a scene, if, if you wanted to make it larger, fill in the context, being able to add things, being able to remove objects, being able to modify materials and so on and so forth. So let's take it to a, 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 a different option. Okay, so as an architect, what, what else do we kind of do in photo in Photoshop? Um, a lot of times we might do sketches. Um, so I have a sketch right here. And I thought, let me let me see what what kind of things that I can do with a sketch. And the first thing I did was um, I looked at these people, right? So this is one of my hand sketches. And so if I if I selected these people here, right, which I kind of like my people, I think they're kind of a cool style, but let's see what, what we can replace them with. So if I say a pencil sketch of two men standing, and you can see here's our results. Kind of cool. I guess this one's pretty neat. Something different. So this is sort of a thought of maybe what we could do with sketching. You could replace some of your sketches with stuff. Maybe you could input things. You could probably remove stuff and so on and so forth. So then I decided let's let's look at interior, see if there's anything we can do on an interior rendering. So if I zoom into this interior rendering of a kitchen here, um, you know, maybe there's something about let's let's add a cereal bowl here. So additive. All right, so that's not too bad. Notice how it added the shadow a little bit tried to make it look like it was kind of in there. Um, so let's try another one. Let's let's add maybe in this corner, we want to add a plant. So I'm just going to go like this. Again, try and generally make it the shape of a plant, say generative fill. And then we'll just say add an interior or indoor house plant. That's kind of cool. All right, let's see the three options we have one, two, three. All right, not bad. That's those all look pretty good especially if you zoom out a little bit. But if you zoom in, you'll notice that I actually put a shadow on the ground. You can see it's 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 even trying to put a reflection in the glass. 
So, you know, it, it looks like it belongs there. Maybe you want to change the contrast a little bit or something like that to make it more more along the lines of, of what you need. So a couple examples of, of adding, of subtracting, of modifying sort of your scene using this generative AI. We could also do the same with the backgrounds of scenes. Um, so if I jump over here, here's a picture of me catching a big four pound bass, uh, which is big for Connecticut, just to let you guys know. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick object selection. And this is another AI tool that's been in, in, uh, in Photoshop, which is really awesome. And I'm going to select the fish and I'm going to select myself and then I'm going to invert the selection and pretend this is a building, you know, then you could actually flip the background and say, um, fishing on a lake in on Mars, or let's see a lake on Mars. So now instead of fishing on this lake, I'm going to be fishing on a lake in Mars. So we have a couple of results here. Any of these look kind of Oh, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, but you can see what it's doing there, right? It's it's filling the background in. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, this is this is big. Uh, and, and so I, I wanted to get this video out there as fast as possible because I want you guys to quickly install the beta and start playing with it. I just gave you a few examples of what you can do, right? You can extend your background. You can flip your background. You can change things like that. You could add objects to your scenes or your, your sketches to your renderings. You can subtract objects. You can you can do all kinds of really, you can remove things. Um, you know, playing with sketches, uh, you know, playing with different prompts within your sketches. I bet you guys can come up with some really, really, really cool stuff. So definitely check out that beta. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, have fun prompting, guys. Talk to you soon.